It's only when you're older, when you're really listening to it, where you go, that's kind of fucked up. Get out the Sandy Cost. Slit his fucking throat. <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what I'm waiting for, man. Like, Point being, I thought this was longer, so I was like, uh, I'll, I'll have to watch this whole thing, I'll make a commitment, you know, oh, stop yeah. motion, and I didn't realize that it was so short, this yeah. is my entire life, and so I, you know, I was like, okay, it's going to be short, so that means they're going to have to really get into it, and when I pressed that play button on that on that player, man, it went for it immediately. I want to enter every party. Yeah! Yeah! Just arise out of the water after lighting myself on fire. And that's the thing. Like, if you want to set the tone for a movie, that's how you fucking do it. That's how you fucking do it. And a character in its own right. And here's the thing. And this is me being stupid, as I am. Probably. Sometimes. All right. I didn't know this was like a musical. Like, I didn't know. Oh, it you was, really? I didn't know it was pure music or, ah. or that it was going to be so. It, uh, so much music. I don't know why. I knew there were songs, mm-hmm. but this this packs more music than like any other Disney movie that I know because it is longer and it has a soundtrack's length worth of of songs or yeah. amount of songs. So it kind of shocked me. I was like, okay, musical number. I know this. I've been to Disneyland. I've been to Halloween in real life. I hear that song. Yeah. This is Halloween, and I was like, okay, this is. A nice little tone setter. You mm-hmm. see a lot of the animation. You see a lot of uh, the kind of special effects, special effects, uh, practical effects, yeah. however you want to call it. Yeah. You see a lot of those things in effect, and and uh, hey. and uh, it's no, it's really interesting to look at because you have like these vampires, and I, you know, we're singing this really lovely song, and it's absolutely amazing. This scene, kind of how they have all this feeling and all this emotion in such a quick sequence, you know, and I like. Also, the fact that a lot of these th- like, things are doing, sorry, a lot of the things that they're doing are kind of morbid. Like, they're chopping off people's heads and, yeah, like, yeah. killing people but, and shit. But it's never, like, super intense or super scary. You know, it's very fun and jovial, and there's, like, kind of a lightness to it. Right. And also the mixture of those 2D ghosts. I oh, really cool like those that? ghosts. I really like so those cool. ghosts. That's probably the, my favorite effect. As weird as that is in, in a film filled with great effects and great practical motion, that those 2D ghosts and just kind of... The fluidness and kind of the, that 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 kind of overlaying made yeah. it more spooky to me, man. Oh, it was man. it was kind of terrifying, but at the same time, like the set design, mm. everything a part of it, all the little nooks and crannies of it, it all looks like ho- like what Halloween Town would sound like. Yeah, and it does a great job of immediately within you know they only they, they know that they only have about seventy minutes to tell their story within like what three minutes. Right, you immediately know. You know, who your main characters are, what they do, how their world works, you know, how this movie's going to feel, how it's going to play, like, just right off the bat. And it's the type of thing that, I mean, shit, not even animated movies, live action movies could could fucking take notes from this, you know? Right. Just how, how you can very quickly and efficiently set up your world. Right. And then the introduction of this spooky motherfucker, <laughs> the man who catches fire, sets himself on fire, and then dives into a green well. That is an introduction for a main character. So, like, if people are like, oh, Jack is so cool. I'm on board right away because yeah, that's yeah. fucking awesome. Fucking that, hardcore. Right. And so my thing is like that entrance, like you said, I want to enter like that everywhere. I want to yeah. put straw in my body, just cast light it on yourself fire. on fire and be like, he's metal as fuck. And that's the thing about this movie. The legacy of this movie is based on that fucking scully skeletal motherfucker right there, Jack Skellington. Yeah, man. And he is the man of this movie, the pumpkin king. He is all of these things. Where Santa Claus is to Christmas, this made-up character is to Halloween, he is and he like, actually holds that title pretty well. He's like the Shogun of Halloween Town, man. Right, <laughs> and he's the dream of every emo girl's fantasies. Lovely singer, so dark and broody, skinny and white, uh, and apparently the part that I did not know, and the part that everyone kind of left out in their description of Jack Skellington, yeah, the music, yeah, the kind of nice dance moves and the kind of skeletal body, but this motherfucker is an actual pimp. Ooh, Jack. Yep. <laughs> wounds ooze and flesh crawl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice work. 
bone daddy. How does he know that that's his name? That's disgusting. That's my favorite guy in the whole movie right there. What, that little, that little <laughs> rat motherfucker? Bone, that, well, and then later, he just uh, it's the way he delivers it. He's like, it hasn't been home all night. <laughs> that, that's your favorite guy right there. I love that guy. <laughs> man, he's the one that he tries to get Jack to have skeletal sex with the man. Hey, man. Why would he call him Bone Daddy? Why, it, why like, would he know like, that? Like they said, you make skin crawl and f- flesh ooze. I'm just saying. She fact, wanted that bony dick. I'm just saying. Well, does he? Oh, we'll get to that in a bit. But like. She wanted that boner? But yeah, anyway, so I, I like to apologize. For and that. so not only do, do everyone want a piece of him, even the trombone player or whatever the hell he's playing, he Bone himself, daddy. <laughs> he himself knows that he's the shit. There are few who deny it. What I do, I am the best. For my talents are renowned far and wide. Some confidence, kids. That's what it takes. Taking and pride see, in your work. That and that's the thing. Like, and th- and I was gonna ask that question, like. Everyone wants to suck his dick. Everyone wants to suck his dick. I want to suck his dick. But the thing is, does he have a dick? Those are some well, skinny... Talk about emo skinny pants. Well, that's the Those thing. are some skinny pants. Let me find the skinny pants right there. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was going to say, I, I feel like if he has a dick, maybe it's kind of like a, like a dog where it's just sort of like stays tucked up in his nether regions. And then when he's like feeling randy, it just sort of like... His, this little like red bone dick starts to like spiral out, you know, and just sort of like poke its way out. I'm just saying, those are some skinny pants. I'm like, every like, does the mayor want to suck his dick too? Like with both heads? Oh, like, yeah, then, like, that, that mayor wants to give him double fellatio. And so the thing is, but if he sticks it in the mayor's mouth, does it come out the other? Mouth? I think it does actually. I'm does that sure. is that they're gonna not they're gonna literally run a train to? on Jack Skellington? Uh, the mayor is gonna be the front, and his head's it's gonna go through his head, and then everyone else is gonna take turns. So you've got like three heads at once, all running a train on that skeleton dick. So is it double? Like, does he? Can he close the mouth on both sides of the dick? Does that? Ooh, maybe that would be. I mean, maybe. I mean, you just have to make sure there's no teeth. But yeah, he could probably do that. I thought he had sharp teeth. Well, that's what I'm saying. He got to we just like make sure that he you know wraps the mouth kind of. Yeah, maybe gun got a little bit. It doesn't matter. This man is tortured. All right, no amount of sex or or double mouth mayor blowing. Man, he, could he ever. really is like the Corey Coleman of uh, Halloween Town. Oh, everybody wants to fuck me. I'm so good at my job. Oh, life is so hard. Oh, I wish I could do something more. But that's the thing. Oh. He's the king of Halloween Town, the Pumpkin King. He Bone Daddy. Bone Daddy. He's got that shit locked down, but he wants more. And man, we spent way too much time talking about his dick, though. I will say that. But you know, he wants to do something different, and and he wants to. You know, he wants to sing this song, uh, what is it called? Jack's Lament, to express yes. how tired he is of doing the same old, same old over year and over after again. Year after year. And like I said earlier, as a surprise, Danny Elfman, I didn't know it was him until I read it afterwards. Yeah, man. This man can sing. There's an empty place in my bones that calls out for something unknown. He's empty. That shit is beautiful. That shit was awesome. And the thing about it was like, okay, I've seen the poster a million times, but yeah. just seeing it in motion, seeing Jack kind of like do his thing in front of that really big yellow moon, that oh, shit is beautiful, beautiful, man. And it, it, it's, I can see why it's got gotten to be so iconic so quickly. And that's what this this whole thing is about. This whole movie is that these songs are the most remarkable and memorable thing about this film, but. It's not just the songs that make it wonderful. It's the fact that you have this spectacular imagery to go along with it. Yeah and, yeah, and a lot of the mood is set by what you're seeing on screen. That's the thing. Yeah, this is a movie where the visuals and and the songs complement each other so well. You know, almost better than any other musical I've seen in in the last like 20, 25 years. You know, right. where they really do. Yeah, it's like the songs are great by themselves. The the visuals are great by themselves. But then when you put them both together. They both um, both of them are improved dr- dramatically by kind of feeding off the other. Right, and so when Jack finds Christmas Town, this. <laughs> by the is... way, I love how he, he falls asleep while walking. <laughs> Jack, yeah, Jack could. could... <laughs> That was weird. He's like, Does he have narcolepsy so... or something. He's I don't like, know. I'm so sad. Uh... I'm going to walk. I'm like, it's like, ooh, a new place. He's oh, what walking. The fuck. Sleepwalking, whatever, Through, in that a day. The earth is flat. Uh, the earth is flat. I'm just saying, he's never walked that far, and he just so happened upon these trees, yeah. and these trees transport them to different uh, to different uh, holidays. Yeah. And then immediately I thought, well, is Arbor Day just a tree that opens up into a tree? Yeah. That's what I was ah, wondering. Ah, yeah, it's a world of trees. Exactly. No, but uh, so he's doing this, and he, you know, he finds Christmas Town, and 
holy hell, man. He makes me want it to be Christmas. Right? Now, like, I, it's easy nowadays to just kind of go along with the humdrum of the holiday season of Christmas. The, the Christmas starts in October, which is kind of the inspiration behind this, was that yeah. the blending of the seasons. Everyone kind of feels a certain malaise when it comes over the world when Christmas comes. I don't want to be with family. I don't want to travel. I don't want to do all this stuff. And, you know, we do all these things year after year. And Jack is looking at this whole thing with a brand new set of eyes and – or lack of eyes, I guess. Holes. A whole new set of holes. And it makes you want to participate in Christmas more. What's this? What's this? There's color everywhere. Must be dreaming. Wake up, Jack. This isn't fair. What's this? By the way, yeah, I, I fabulous as shit, by the Boom. way. Well, let's, let's see that let's, let's see pose right one more time, right there. Jack, this isn't fair. Yeah. Fast. <laughs> There's children throwing snowballs instead of throwing heads. And here, they've got a little tree. How queer. It's hey, Jack, it is 2017. You can't be saying things are queer, man. Uh, uh, it's 1993. You, it's 2017. It's, it's you can't 90, be saying it's, it's that. It's 1993. You can't uh, be uh, saying Sa- trees. Sammy queer didn't always mean what queer means. You can't now. say that a tree uh, is that's, gay. That's not what that. I mean, who well, if the, <laughs> well, you're making a big deal out of this. If a tree's gay, so what? I'm just saying, you can't be like, how queer? Look at that hey, gay it's ass a com- tree. It's a compliment. He's saying it with joy in his heart, all right? Like, if it's a gay tree, it's a gay tree. Whatever. That tree can love whoever he wants. Why are you talking over your mouth? Look, I'm just trying to prove a point, Sammy. That's all. Christmas town? Ooh. <laughs> oh. and, and so, like, but the thing is, that, that's not going on for a while. Yeah. And not in a bad way. Like, no, the, the, no, no, no. It's it's great. You're like, you're just, you're like right there in Jack's shoes. You're just like, this is the coolest place ever. I want to spend every Christmas here. But the thing is, we do. Every year we deck halls, we put the stockings up, we put hey, the trees hey, up. It and, doesn't look anywhere near as cool as that shit. Though. I mean, uh, you're not doing Christmas right. But you know what? That is pretty cool right there. Any, any one of these scenes are there. Oh, reverse uh, it back. Uh, that gay tree. Look at that last stuff. He's just so happy to be there. And I don't remember ever feeling that happy to be around Christmas. But now really? I do because that, I see Now it. you do. There you go. And so what makes me laugh and what I like following this is that Jack is trying to describe this to the Halloween town folk. And he's like, okay, well, I'm trying to describe this whole new idea, which in my head was how Christians try to convert pagans into <laughs> belief in Jesus. You see... There's like not an animal god. It's just it's just one god you see, and you just you know. Why they build Cosby? Chill. It's one guy you see, you and see, and he's just a really cool guy, and he just don't be a dick. Uh, uh, uh. One guy in the back being like, oh uh, yeah. Uh, when do we get to put on wolf costumes and have orgies? No, 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 no. We put up stockings put over stockings fire, and you wear slacks and. Uh, eat vanilla ice cream. And so when eggnog. And so when Jack is trying to <laughs> describe the the what this foreign holiday is to them. They yeah. only know Halloween. It, you know, it's something about kind of like the earnestness of him trying to describe something new. That's something he's excited about. Yeah. And, you know, and then when it turns from like, Oh, I'm going to try to describe it as a jolly holiday where it's like light and airy. And they're so confused. It's like what's in the box? Is it a skull? It's, it's fucking Gwyneth Paltrow's head, man. It's Gwyneth Paltrow's head, but no, what's in the box? What are all these things? And he's like, well, you know what? They're not really getting, not really getting the message. So let me put it to him in a way that they can. And I really like that tur- that dark turn it took. This is a thing called a present. The whole thing starts with a box. A box? Is it steel? Is it filled with a box? And they call him Sandy Claus. <laughs> Fuck that. That yeah. <laughs> If I was a kid, I would have been scared of shit at that. Yeah. That's pretty spooky right there. Oh, you don't like Sandy Claus? No. He's got claws. No, and so like just kind of that weird like All right, they're not getting this. Ooh. How can I Yeah, how can I articulate to this in a way they'll understand? All right, uh there's a big scary dude. He's got claws. You all in? You dig? You He's dig? A giant man who sneaks into homes. He breaks it? into people's houses and leaves shit. All Are right, you on yeah. board? All right, cool. And you know, and that dark turn from that moment, it goes on. Now, yeah. you know, Jack is trying to get everyone on board to do Christmas things. He's assigning people what to do. Yeah. And then he gets uh he gets lock, shock, and barrel. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and Oogie Boogie's goons to do the task of, of, of capturing Santa Claus or yeah. Sandy Claus Sandy in this Claus. universe. And up until this point, we know that Oogie Boogie's an asshole from the simple fact that he's like, and don't tell Oogie Boogie. Because he's an asshole. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Jack immediately is like, do not fucking tell Oogie Boogie, all right? I'm not dealing with that guy again. You know, but at the same time, you don't know how bad Oogie Boogie is until you see these kids act as his kind of cronies and his, and his uh, henchmen, if you will. Yeah. And yeah. because we're introduced to them, you know, or rather, before we're introduced to them, really, 
We just know them as shitty kids. Like, okay, they're mischievous, they're trick or treaters, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Nothing too out of the ordinary. But when they start singing in one of the, actually, one of the, if not the most iconic song from this movie, um, it sounds a whimsical song about kidnapping Santa, but if you really listen to it, it is all sorts of fucked up. This is a kid song for I children to I listen to. I love it, man. I love it. No, but let's okay, let me just go down. I wrote lyrics down. I pulled the lyrics up and kidnap the Sandy Claus, and these all are all right. the things they want to do to him. Okay. Throw him in a box, bury him for 90 years, <laughs> then see if he talks. <laughs> Tie him in a bag, throw him in the ocean, then see if he is sad. <laughs> Beat him with a stick, lock him up for 90 years. See what makes him tick. They're going to cut this man open. Danny Elfman, ladies and gentlemen. And then last but not least, chop him into tiny bits. Mr. Oogie Boogie is sure to get his kicks. They're talking about mangling Santa Claus. This is a kid's song. They're going to fuck him up. These little bastards are fucked up, man. Yeah, man. And the thing is, we endure, you know, we have to endure all this ravaged torture of Santa Claus saying in this sweet song, sing songy way. Like, people who have been watching this since the 90s are okay with kids singing about cold blooded murder cannoning Santa Claus and then him being blown into bits and then Oogie Boogie and Jack being mad that he's in tiny bits. <laughs> That's madness as a kid's film. Uh, it's great though. Uh, like, you know, it's whimsical and everybody's being like, ah, whatever, it's Santa Claus. It's only later. It's only when you're older when you're really listening to it where you go, it's kind of fucked up. Get at the Sandy Claus. Slit his fucking throat. <laughs> like that's yeah. That's what I'm waiting for, man. Like that's like that's not far from what they're really saying. What? <laughs> Did I get you with that one? <laughs> oh my god, Ian's in there dying. Oh my god. Oh man. Oh, Ooh, that was good. I mean, that's that's how uh, I feel about this movie, man. This like. They want to. They want to make this a nice scene songy little song. Not too dissimilar from last week's movie, honestly, where it's like, yeah, sing songy, and then it'll take these very sudden dark turns. However, this movie is able to do that balance a lot better. Yeah. But then you have actually, arguably, since this is a Disney film, you have arguably one of the baddest Disney villains in all of Disney villains. A lot of them, they're they're shallow, and this actually, you know what? This character right here, he's pretty shallow in his own right, but right. he's a showman. And I'm all for a showman. And Oogie Boogie is one bad motherfucker, man. <laughs> I don't know where he got this whole gambling shtick from. Love like, it. I don't know why Oogie Boogie and gambling go hand in hand, but that's a decision that this director made or Tim Burton made or whatever have you. And it is one badass decision. There's something very wrong, cause this may be the last time you hear the Boogie song. That's cool. Oh, uh, that's yeah. That's, that is sure. And that movie that goes on, right? So that, fucking right cool. There, that whole sequence with uh, like, so it's stop motion, but then it's also black light. Black light with like animated spiders and all, like all, like the whole set is black light. And there's different like rotoscoping things. There's yeah. like, gambling machines that will shoot you. Santa Claus is being tortured, and you never really think to see Santa Claus in black light. So it is actually kind of weird. This big ass ghostly white dude with like a really dark suit. It is really scary. Yeah. And so for me watching this, I go, man, this is really unique. This is like uh, the voodoo man from uh, Princess and the Frog. Oh, the Shadow King. The Shadow King, yeah. yeah. But with like actual, like, with, with the actual ability to portray black light, glow, neon, right? Mm. And I think it, I never really noticed it until I just said it right now that that is an element that like stop motion has that other mediums can't recreate, or if they can, it's not going to look quite the same, you know? No, like, it, that's genuinely black lit set. Yeah. That's genuinely stop motion lights. And that Oogie Boogie may have been enhanced a little bit, but not much. It may have been painted that color, but that's all real. Those little LED lights, all those little flashing things. And this movie, what it does a lot also that's a little eerie is that it'll switch uh, stop motion, but then it'll have, like, bubbles from, like, water yeah, flowing up. And like that's live actual a, time. Live action insert shots, yeah. <laughs> and so you have all this stuff there, and... You have Oogie Boogie introduced not only from his minions being just absolute pieces of shit kids and murderous, mm -hmm. but then you have that wonderful dance and song. And then Jack is like, yes, I'm going to be Sandy Claus. He kidnapped him, got his hat. Let's do this thing. I'm about it. This is the part I was asking. It's about that time. Ooh. It's YouTube comment section time here. Yeah. Oh my God. God. Welcome YouTube. Hey, everybody watching live. You can watch live if you go to doubletoes.com. $6.99 or $0.99 cents every time. But before that, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome. 
How you doing? Thank you for watching our episode right now that I just punched my mic about. Uh, fuck, fuck this I was going to say a nightmare, but no, the nightmare before Christmas. So go and comment below on the nightmare before Christmas. Like and subscribe. Hit it three times that like button so it likes it, unlikes it, and likes it again. Subscribe button because we want to hit the 100,000 by the end of the year. We want to hit 100,000 anyway, but let's do it before the end of the year. Also, leave a comment down below. And share all these videos. Share Double Toasted. And be sure to go to DTMerch.com. Get yourself some wonderful merchandise. Look at the advertisement. It's right there in my face. Go to DTMerch.com. We got hoodies. We got cool sorts of sweaters and beanies and all sorts of things you can want for this holiday season, Ian. So with that said, let's read last week's Jingle All The Way. You ready for this, Ian? Oh, I'm ready. All right, let's do this. The number one comment of the week, we have the random black gamer. This movie has the embraceive kind of cringe that makes it kind of a classic. I was busting my balls laughing when those Payless and Midget Power Rangers ran up on Arnold. Go, go, Demon Team! Lamau, <laughs> Random Black Gamer. I am with you on that. I, that's, why, that's exactly what I said. Those weird putty patroller looking. So fucking weird. Stupid guys. Yeah. Um, I agree with that 100%, man. This is kind of that guilty pleasure. And a lot of people went into this movie like admitting yeah. this is a guilty pleasure uh, jingle all the way. Uh, we had uh, similar comments back to back from Raymond Friend and Dan Joker. Put that cookie down now. <laughs> Put the cookie down now. Now. And that is on par with the oh. ass to ass and uh, what was it? Bat nipples comments oh, yeah, before. Yeah, Let's yeah. put those in the Pantheon. Ass the catchphrase, to ass. All caps comments in Sammy Easy shit. Put that in the Pantheon. Uh, we have, okay, you're going to like this one. And this is the only reason why I'm, I'm, I'm even reading this is because you'll like it okay. because you like the weird ones. I, I wasn't going to read this because I don't like a rewarding weirdness Ooh. on weirdness alone. I'm ready. But Ian likes it, and oh, uh, it, it's 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 kind of funny. There's one part that makes me laugh. Uh, this is from Scarface nine five one one. What Sammy really thinks when he looks at Ian, <laughs> Ian, my love, your smile and laugh burns a hole into my heart. Your smooth skin and long tongue <laughs> make me long for the days when we used to pop each other's zits from each other's backs and eat the pus. What the fuck? I miss the way you used to hold me, and I miss the way you rub my butt cheeks with your teeth. I love you, Ian. I wish I had the heart to tell you one day I will. One day. One day. <coughs> uh, I am genuinely speechless. Uh, I, I miss the way you rub my butt cheeks I, with I, your teeth. I mean this I mean this in the nicest way possible. You're fucking weird and you need help. <laughs> you need to get some fucking help. In the words, that, that, point, that point needs Jesus. In the words of Michael Jordan, stop it. Get help. <laughs> but I, I would have just let it go, but... Uh, it was just too weird to pass up. It was woo, mostly man, mostly is... the teeth on the butt cheeks thing made me laugh. I don't know why. Oh, that's so weird. Please stop doing that. Mentgasm. Only reason why I'm reading this is because the first line of it. Thank you for reading my comment. My mom was very happy. Why you know is your what? mom watching this show? I'm just saying, you know what? I'll read this next comment just to make your mom happy again. Jingle All The Way is way the fuck out. It's so much fun. Definitely one of my favorite awesomely bad good movies or good bad movies. Family comedy, my ass. Too many adult undertones in it. Ian, yes, substances go with this flick like flies to shit. Arnold and Sinbad still make money off this too. Fuck yeah, they which do. Which is the happy story for Sinbad. Warms um, my heart. And uh, now this one, uh, this is Kano 64. Right, you're right. gonna, I know you, Ian, you're gonna love this All one. Right. Back in the day, my older brother got a Turbo Man for Christmas, and I got a Buzz Lightyear. I feel like I got the better end of the deal there. <laughs> I'm thinking that your mom hates your older brother. Yeah, yeah, your mom, yeah, your brother, your older brother's a degenerate or something like that. Your mom fucking hates and him. And so the main thing is, I'm wondering, is that, okay, was your older brother, so it is your older brother. Yeah. So, does she think that Turbo Man was more mature <laughs> than sure. Buzz Lightyear or something? Sure. Like, what is the age difference there where you both were playing with action figures, but one gets a Buzz Lightyear and one gets Turbo Man? <laughs> Why not? Oh, my God. And, um, okay, so somebody got mad at us last week. I don't Did know it? exactly what it is, but people were bringing this up. And uh, Roy Potash, a.k.a. Point Boy, Sammy and Ian not understanding the Nostalgia Critic reference in the comments made our soul cry. Aww. A lot of people were mad. Like, that's a Nostalgia Critic reference. I don't know what I comment. I don't know which one. Uh. Link, link it down below. Leave a comment, and hopefully it won't get blocked, but leave a comment to the video where he makes that reference because I want to know. Yeah. Sorry, I don't seen shit, and Ian... Uh, I, I don't watch Nostalgia Critic. I'm not, sorry. not literate on that part. Not No no, no negative against him. No, I just, I just, I just don't, don't see shit. Yeah. Yeah, and then I didn't know I didn't catch that reference. And last but not least, this is from Tiana McCoy. Sinbad is so underrated. I love him. Tiana, 
I'm with you on that. You were the that. one who liked that comment, didn't you? You were the uh, one person. I might have been. Yeah. I'm, I can neither confirm nor deny that I was that person. But you know what? Sinbad is way underrated, man. He was a classic legend. Oh. He was a legend. You say that like he's dead. He might as well be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's sad. Sinbad, I love you. Come to the show. I would love to see you. But that, that wouldn't be hard. Yeah. With that said, I just want to say, hey, thank you, YouTube. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. That's right. You need to comment. If you don't comment, I'm not going to thank you. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay toasty. You can say bye to the people out there. Bye, everybody. What's next week? I think next week is a double feature. Uh, At some point, you might only get one. Batman Returns with Patrick Gertz. The Star, Star Wars, Wars Holiday, Holiday Special. Special. We're Fuck. doing it. So excited. We're doing it, and Ian's got the wardrobe, and uh, we got to figure it out there. But anyway, thank you for watching. Leave those comments down below, and we'll see you next time. Go to DTMerch.com one more time. Go buy some stuff for the holidays. Use that crimin money, and go ahead and pay for something there. That being said, it's time to go buy, everybody. Bye, YouTube. Bye. It's the bye, YouTube.